In addition to praying the rosary on the five first Saturdays of the month and making the communion of reparation, Our Lady has asked us to keep her company for 15 minutes, meditating upon one of the mysteries contained in her Holy Rosary. Today we join her in contemplating the crowning of our Lord with thorns. Our Lord is exhausted, wounded from head to toe. The barbarians would continue, but then, according to the vision of St. Bridget, a man, an individual passing by, questions the soldiers and says, What are you doing? You're killing this man. You're putting him to death. Release him. Whether it was a man or an angel, we cannot be certain. But one holy individual passing by brought the cruel scourging to its conclusion. Our Lord was released and his body fell to the pavement. And there was silence. The executioners draw near to him and kicking our Lord pushing him prodding him with their feet they bid him to rise they have not yet finished with him as our Lord creeps over to his linen garments the evil men knock the garments further with laughter as our Lord has to painfully crawl along the ground like a worm trodden underfoot in order to reach some garments that he wraps around himself, a robe that he throws about himself. But then with no time, almost no time having passed, they pull him, the evil soldiers, into a guardhouse while our Lord is still trying to wipe the blood off his face to allow him to see. The crowning and mocking of our Lord took place in the inner court of this guardhouse, which stood in the forum over the prisons. It was surrounded with pillars. The entrance was open. According to Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, about 50 wretches belonging to the army servants slaves executioners they took an active part in this time of maltreatment of our lord they crowded in and then with laughter and jeering begin to multiply our lord's sufferings they joke and they laugh as if seeking applause from an audience. And indeed, there was an audience, the audience of demons. There was a hole in the middle of the court, and into that hole they had put the base of a pillar, an old column. And that's where our Lord was put upon, in the center of this guardhouse and it was maliciously covered with sharp objects as our Lord sat down. Again they cruelly stripped our Lord taking the clothing he'd just wrapped round himself and then chucking on top of him an old red military cloak that was rough that had been sitting in the corner that stank and they rub it onto him, brushing against his wounds, opening sores. This is the garment of our king. Now they plait a crown of thorns. The crown not simply covering his forehead, a crown according to St. Bridget as more akin to a helmet completely enveloping our Lord's head with thorns 
piercing his eyes, piercing the top of his head, piercing his neck. Thorns so sharp, penetrating the skull. They knock the crown onto his head with the force of strikes. Blood trickles down our Lord's holy face and our Lord looks at us crowned with thorns he looks at us this is what you have done to me where you have made other things other people your king this is what you have done to me by your sins of pride when you would enthrone yourselves and mock me and my commandments this is what you have done to me by your sins blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich keeps quiet on the horrible inventions employed by the wicked wretches to insult our poor saviour she feels she cannot even tell us the evil words they say to our Lord our Lord's tongue contracts convulsively his flesh is quivering he's consumed with fever he thirsts he thirsts for souls my Jesus are you not the true king of the universe and how is it that you are now become the king of sorrow and reproach see to where love has brought you oh my most lovely god my god when will the day arrive when i may so unite myself to you nothing may evermore have power to separate me from you and I may no longer be able to cease to love you and be your servant, my Lord and my King. St. Alphonsus relates that all these crimes, this maltreatment, was as a result of bribery by Caiaphas and the leaders of the Jews. They looked through the lattices and took the light at the suffering of our Lord. How men, apparently holy, could take the light in the suffering of our Redeemer. O oh Lord, let me never allow my heart to turn to hatred against any man, even my greatest of enemies even the one that has done so much ill towards me in this world. May I never have hatred towards him. May I never take delight in his suffering. Do not let my heart ever become as hard as those hypocritical Pharisees and leaders of the Jews. While they mock him, kneeling down, offering words of false praise. The entirety of creation cries out in adoration. The angels are prostrate to the ground before their King and their Lord. I unite myself to that scene, not as one of those offering mockery, but I lay face to the floor adoring him my true king pledging him obedience pledging him loyalty i will serve you jesus even when it costs me derision even when i face mockery how can i protest if i have to face maltreatment if i have to face discrimination as a result of following you how can I protest when you in silence have borne such reproach out of love of me? Ah, cruel thorns, ungrateful creatures, 
Why do you torment your creator thus? No, the fawns were but innocent instruments. It is my sins, my evil thoughts, which were the wicked thorns which, aff which afflicted your head, O Lord. On one occasion, our Lord appeared to Saint Teresa, crowned with thorns, and the holy saint began to compassionate him. But the Lord answered her, saying, Teresa, Compassionate me not on account of the wounds which the thorns of the Jews produced, but commiserate me on the account of the wounds which the sins of Christians occasion me. O oh, my soul, it was your evil thoughts that inflicted torture upon the venerable head of the Redeemer. See, open your eyes and see, and bitterly bewail all the evil of your life, all the ways that you have tormented our Lord's holy soul and his holy head by ungratefully turning your back to your Lord and God. In the midst of their derision and maltreatment of the blessed Saviour, there is a summons, an order. Pilate is ready. He is waiting to present the criminal to the Jews. So, without even removing the crown or, or the robe, our Lord is pulled to his feet once again and dragged out onto the balcony. Even that hard-hearted pagan pilot was filled with disgust, with horror at the barbarous treatment of this individual, of our blessed Lord. Even Pilate, who had been told by his wife, this man is holy. Pilate sees the guilt of his own sin, the guilt which fell upon him the day of his death, when his soul went to be judged by that same Lord and Saviour who now he passes sentence on. The unjust Pilate, who previously had declared our Lord to be innocent, is vacillating. He sees that the crowd want his death, and Pilate begins to acquiesce to their demands. Our Blessed Lady is there. She is there on the pavement. As Pilate says, Behold the man. Our Lady hears, Behold your son, your beloved, the one that you held in your arms at Bethlehem, the one you nursed, that you fled with to Egypt that you raised in Nazareth, that you found in the temple. You have not seen your Lord for some time. Now he is crowned, not with the crown that befits him as King of Kings and Lord of Laws, but crowned by a sinful world who have rejected their master and their king. O oh, Blessed Mother, you loved him, you never rejected him, you always served him, and your immaculate heart was always in perfect conformity with his holy will. And so when I crowned my Lord with thorns by my sins, I also crowned your heart by my sins, your heart so united to his. Forgive me, my mother, for having thus treated him and thus treated you. Now I wish to serve you. I wish to be your true child. Help me to pluck those fawns from your heart that pierce it so. Help me to make reparation. Reparation by prayer, by penance, and by a life of true fealty of true service, a 
as a loyal follower, as a devoted disciple. Blessed Mother, on that pavement, they all cry out, crucify him, crucify him. I was one of them. And yet with tenderness, you still see me as one of your children. I thank you that you are so good to me, O oh Mother, that you have not rejected or despised me, but have embraced me, your wayward child, that now wishes to follow you and to keep you company during this mystery.